So, back to Manchester, where we're on the search with Colin and Anthony for the ultimate city centre loft for £135,000. We've seen three properties so far, but the boys are proving difficult to please. I don't even want to go and look, honestly. Remember, they've been on the hunt for seven months before we came along, so they aren't going to compromise. They're looking for the perfect size, layout and location at the right price. It's early morning, the guys are still asleep. Kirsty and I have come looking for divine inspiration. We've come to this church, say our prayers, and would you believe it, it's being turned into flats. St George's Church, no seriously, we've just got the, uh, the brochure on this, it's going to be turned into 25 apartments. What do you think, Kirsty? would they live in an old church? I think they definitely live in an old church, but for them, location is everything. And I think this is an old church in an industrial state, and it's just not what they're looking for. You mean we got up early without reason? Onwards then, with a spring in the step to property number four, centrally located at Samuel Ogden Street. This one, at least, is in the right place. Impressions, guys? A lot of features. Yeah, nice. A lot features. of features. Bit of ceiling height, a few windows for you. Yeah, gorgeous. Windows. No noise of traffic. So, just first impression is the living room you think might be a bit, it's a bit small. Too narrow. Yeah. There's not much you could really do with it, you can see. No. They've got it laid out as best as you well, can. What else do you need apart from a sofa, an armchair, and a telly? Because you, you've got all your eating space down there. Yeah, Phil, you're playing devil's advocate. You know, know perfectly well advocate. that this room is like a train track. It's too mm. it's long, long and narrow. narrow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very corridor. It's not yeah. got a homely feel to it. But I really want to take you next door and show you, you know, the bedroom, what is now the bedroom. But Phil and I didn't bring the boys here at this stage in the hunt for nothing. Although this space is currently divided up into living room and bedroom, neither of which is very big, our key to realising the full potential of this loft is to take out the dividing wall, effectively doubling the living space. If this wall came down, it would be an absolutely enormous sitting room. It really would. It would be huge. I wish I could just cut a hole, like a little peep hole in this wall, and you could stand back and look the whole way down. I mean, I wish we could climb out those windows, actually. That would be the best way of doing it. And you could look in on the room as a whole. You're pretty, pretty imaginative, though. You can picture the width. Yeah, I think we you? can visualise how it'd be. I think what? it looks stunning. The one worry for me is that we're going to downvalue the property by doing the alterations rather than maintain its value. Yeah. Changing a two-bedroom to a one-bedroom. One well, you're changing a one-and-a-half-bedroom bedroom into, into a really, really strong, strong one. one Come on, guys. We're creating your perfect flat for you here. I've come up here, without the boys, to the room that the current owner uses as a spare room. The boys regard this as a bed deck, but it has its own light source. And if you bricked up this wall, you enter it off the stairs which are off the hall, it's a proper bedroom. Using this as the main bedroom would enable them to knock down that wall which is between the kitchen sitting room and the current bedroom. You'd be doubling the size of your living space and you'd have an even better view, a really fabulous view. I don't think it would damage the resale value of the flat at all. So it's the dividing wall that really holds the key to improving this loft. When you're viewing, never be afraid to use your imagination to create the space that you want. If you own a leasehold property and you're considering moving walls around, structural or otherwise, that's not structural. Be sure to ask your solicitor to check the terms of your lease. It's highly likely that you'll need permission from the freeholder of the building in order to make alterations. It's called a license to alter. You must have it before you start work. I know what Kirsty's saying about that wall. You could knock that down, you get a fabulous view right through the windows. But I'm not sure I want to spend that and do that to it. I know, I know the feeling. Um, and the worry I've got is about losing the height in the hallway. If you take that wall down and take it back, mm -hmm. you'd lose all the height. I do like the flat, like all the features. Yeah. I like lots of aspects about it. It's quite just not good. sure on the use of space, as you say. The boys don't seem that keen. Mark my words, we'll be bringing them back here. It's got far too much to offer. I'm not letting them get away with it. Neither am I. After all, loft living is about maximising your living space. 
So it's on to property number five. Now, why do I have a sinking feeling? Well, at least it has a balcony, but all is not well in the smallest room. Well, there's not a very good smell coming out of the no, bathroom. It's not which, which says to me there might be a problem with the drain, so that's something that I'd be looking into. No good. On to the next one, number six. And time to start being cruel to be kind. So? Nice. But. <laughs> No, 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 just, no but. I'm banning but, OK? Just looking out the window. And seeing that we're at quite a low level. Six feet off the ground. I'm not giving up. No one can see walking by. I mean, no one walking by here can, can press their nose to the glass unless they're very tall. And frankly, if there are basketball players walking around like that, they can come <laughs> in if they want. It's really no laughing matter. We've got a serious problem. The places in the lads' favourite areas are either too small or too expensive for them. However, a solution may lie with property number seven in the northern quarter, home to the vaults. At first glance, the northern quarter may not look like an up-and-coming area, but it's tipped to become Manchester's next property hotspot. This old garment district is attracting millions of pounds of developers' money. It's only a 10-minute walk from the city centre and an opportunity to get in before the prices rocket. We just might be in luck. We're here to see the building behind us, which is covered in scaffolding. There's only a show flat available in this former bank vault. Colin and Anthony have had to be dragged here. It is not their favourite area, but Phil and I feel it might be a very good investment. So we're going to go in and check it out. Not your usual Saturday afternoon no. stroll down Park Lane, Kirsty. Yeah, the nettles. Right, come and look at this, you two. I'm thrilled to bits with this. I know what you feel about the Northern Quarter, but look at this space. Space huge. Yeah, it's huge. Enormous living space. I mean, this is a, a big sofa and it, and it looks lost in that space. Exposed brick. Yeah. OK, nice. ceiling height. A lot of light. You've got your own dining area, original, yeah. be, uh, original pillars. Nice. You could paint them purple, like the famous purple pillars. <laughs> it's a big space. It is a big space. It's got some Overall nice impression, Come it feels really bedroom. spacious and nice. Come and look at the bedroom. Right, now here we are. Look, your bedroom. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that this no is no there. better than a bed deck. But it is, because it's huge. And the kitchen is over there. It's completely separate. Right, come and look at this, you two. It's huge. It's huge. There's an absolutely enormous hall. Well, I'm a big fan of hallways. It's just someone welcoming friends, and the immediate impression is big. Enormous. Great big bathroom. bathroom. Yeah, absolutely huge. enormous. So, gang, this is it. Shoot, shoot from the hip. What do you think of it? I like it. You're impressed? I like it a lot. Like You're it, pleased yeah. that we brought you here? Yes. Yeah. I'm pleased we've seen this flat. I'm not so pleased it's where it is. What I'm interested in this is about a 30 seconds walk away, somebody's spending £10 million making it look nicer. Now, if somebody was going to spend £10 million on my immediate neighbourhood, if I, if, I, if I wasn't living there, I'd try and get to live there. And if I was living there, I'd sit pretty and count my money. All we're saying is that we feel that we've been given a crystal ball. That what's happened in other cities, in other garment districts, is that they have become hugely popular. It's happened in New York, it's happened in London, and it seems to me that it's happening in Manchester. And purchasing a property like this could put you ahead of the game. Right, flat's gorgeous, as we say. It's, yeah, I'm worried that we're being dragged to areas where we don't want to look. It's got the space, it's got the style, it's got everything we want in terms of a flat, but not out there. Well, not out there yet, boys, but half close your eyes and I swear you can almost see restaurants and shopping malls. How much of a gamble do you think this location is? I don't see it as a gamble. I really don't. Millions of pounds being spent down the road. It's going to mm. happen. 
it's difficult because we know Manchester, we know what the area's like. Um, and during the day, we're filming now during the day and it's fine. In the evenings, coming back mm -hmm. to the flat would feel very unsafe. We show them things in their target area that are too small. Yeah. And they go, no, they're too small. Yeah. So we show them things that they can't afford in their target area and they go, no, we can't afford it. So we bring them, it's a natural step. We bring them somewhere where they don't necessarily want to be, but they can afford what they want. It gets, it, it's very difficult to narrow down what you're looking for. Um, and I think the looking, it creates more of a sense of urgency and more of a sense of pressure because you're looking for something that is maybe not out there and then it's the case of you're going to have to compromise. Well, it's taken them a while but overnight Colin and Anthony are finally getting the idea that it's just not possible to get everything they want for their £135,000. Something is quite clearly going to have to give. Guys, where are we at now? You've had a couple of days, we've seen quite a few properties. You've had the night to think about it. Tell us what, where, you, where are your thoughts? Um, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, it's, it's weird really, because we've looked at quite a few flats um, and a lot of them contain what we're looking for, but we can't seem to get the whole package, the right sort of detail, the right sort of features, the size, in the right location. Um, and I feel a little bit frustrated this morning, um, but anxious as well that we carry on and look in and see if we can find what we're looking for. I think it has made us realise that although we've considered all the options and we've been doing that for a long time, I think yesterday really, really did focus our minds on the fact that we do want to stay in a particular area. I think up till the last couple of days we might have considered elsewhere. Having worked that out, what part of your criteria are you going to be prepared to bend on? Size, I think. <laughs> So, with that in mind, we've just got enough time to try and pull another property out of the bag. And they don't want a bed deck. We went to see a couple of things the other day with bed decks and they're absolutely adamant, no bed decks. We've just had a bit of luck. There's a top floor flat come to the market today in the block behind me. We're the first people to see it and I'm dying to get in there and see what it's like. Come on, team. The property, R8, is in Bloom Street, deep in the heart of Manchester's gay village. The apartment's got not one, but two proper bedrooms and some superb original features. Well, it's got the windows and the beams. Balcony. Fabulous, fabulous view. I think it's fantastic. Let's go and check out the rest of it. OK. I think we like this one a lot. It looks like we've finally hit the jackpot. It's got absolutely everything the boys want, with a few little extras thrown in. Wow, just a few beams. <laughs> just a few more beams. You want it, features, right, right. guys. <laughs> on sweet shower. On sweet showering, yeah. Fantastic. It's all fitted out really well, isn't it? Yeah. Very, very subtle. But all roads lead back to that fabulous balcony and one of the best views in central Manchester. Things are starting to feel very positive. It's really spectacular, isn't it? So, guys, cut to the chase. Are you impressed with the view? Stunning. Especially the view down Princess Street yeah. with the bridge. Were the you ever through. expecting to find a balcony in your flat? Not in the budget, I don't That's think. That's what we'd hoped for, but yeah. you weren't anticipated really. we'd get. And how about were you anticipating a view like that? Well, it's one we'd hoped for as well. <laughs> <laughs> but you hadn't anticipated. Yeah. No. How about the windows? Stunning. Stunning. They're modern, but fit quite well with the building. You can see you know, where they're going with in terms of the and style. it's very private as well because you're screened on either side and with the old wall, so you don't feel you're being imposed. Lots of positive yeah. stuff yeah. here. Definitely. The flat's 140 grand, five grand more than they said they can afford, and there's no parking. But could that balcony swing it? It is exciting. It's a lot of money, but it's exciting. So what do you think? I like it. I like it a lot. I do. Fabulous balcony. Um, it's the balcony that really, really sells it. It is, and the fact that you've got and all the windows. Behind. Yeah. What a fabulous view. Definitely. However, not everything is perfect with apartment 405. It is above the noisiest bar on the whole of the noisiest street in central Manchester. <laughs> and that is the only thing. But it's, the, it's big enough, it's the right price. We've got to deal with the noise issue. Yeah. But they, they know they've got to give on something.